We just spent 12 days on Piano Aurora, visiting the bars on board and sampling many of the drinks. We've sat on stools, been sophisticated in a gin bar and done coffee and cake. We'll show you what to expect in each venue and how busy each bar gets. So grab yourself a drink and come along exploring with us. And stay with us to the end to find out how much the drink packages cost and the prices of the drinks. Carmen's is the show lounge with a spacious dance floor that is big enough for a large amount of people. There is comfortable seating around the venue and this is slightly tiered. Sometimes your views are slightly restricted. Bar service was usually very good in here, although when it is very dark you did sometimes have to wave over to get the waiter's attention. The waiters were really friendly in here and nothing was too much trouble for them. It holds a lot of people and it was at its capacity on gala night at the captain's party. It's a versatile space offering an array of entertainment such as line dancing, ballroom dancing, live music and bingo. Anderson's has a very different feel to it. This is the gin bar. No entertainment in here, just elegance and sophistication. It is decorated superbly and we love the fireplaces and bookcases. This was probably our favourite bar to sit in on the entire ship. It was at its busiest on formal evenings when people enjoyed a pre-dinner drink in here. It seemed very quiet in the day and late at night. We always managed to get a seat in here, even at peak times. The menu in here was gin heavy, so if you prefer a wider choice of beverages, it may not be the bar to order from. But if you enjoy gin, it's definitely the place to come. We sampled a couple of the gin flights in here. Green Which one is this one, the lemon drizzle? Yeah, lemon drizzle. Okay. Yeah, lemon. Oh, it's strong. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. And my last one. This, this is looks like it's got little prawns in it. They're not prawns, I probably, it's little strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is strawberry. Pimple. Oh, the man said this is the most popular one. Yeah, this is the fruity and spicy. And, and it's, it's 37 least, Yeah, the least alcoholic. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Yeah, it, the strawberry definitely hits you at the end. It's like a perfumey kind of one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was our gin tasting. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. Yeah, even if you're good. afraid you're not going to like any of the gins, it's worth just definitely giving it a go. I'd yeah. quite like to do the wine flight tasting next in yeah, the glass we could, house. Yeah, we could perhaps try that yeah. next. Yeah. So this is Anderson's. Nice place to come for a pre-dinner drink. Lovely setup. Lovely furniture decorated nicely the staff are really helpful friendly uh, knowledgeable about their gins and yeah we'd recommend this bar wouldn't we definitely and so on to champions this venue reminded me of our local social club the chairs and tables are very utilitarian but that's not a criticism i think it's good that the various bars on aurora have a different look and feel to them it can be bland when every single venue looks the same. This place did get very busy. It was probably the hardest venue to get a seat in when there was something happening here. It is quite a small area and is the main venue for all the quizzes on board which are really popular. I was surprised that they didn't do some of the quizzes in the bigger venues as every time there was a quiz on people were absolutely packed in. If you like your quizzes as we do, get there early to get a table. Bar service was probably the slowest of all the bars here and that was probably down to the amount of people that would congregate at activity times. The staff still did an amazing job of getting everyone served as quickly as possible. Charlie's is more of an area than a bar. The waiters from Anderson would take your order. The seating was comfortable and the venue was light and airy. It overlooks the atrium and is a good place to people watch. It was generally a quiet place to sit, but would get busy when the pianist performed. The performances were normally in the afternoons and early evenings on our cruise. Masquerade is a bar that is dark with no natural light, so was very much an evening venue. Seating wasn't as comfortable as some of the other venues. There were a lot of bucket seats and stools in here. 
Bar service was very quick and efficient and the staff were friendly. There was a variety of entertainment taking place in here from karaoke to quizzes, choirs to dance lessons. There were even art classes held here. The Glass House. Now, this is a speciality restaurant as well as a bar. I have to say, we really enjoyed it in here. Seating seemed mainly for those choosing to eat here, but if you wanted to sample some different wines from the menu, there were some tables around the edge that the staff made us feel very welcome at. Talking of staff, they were really knowledgeable about their wines and very friendly too. It had a wide selection of wines to choose from and we decided to have a different type of wine here most evenings. In fact, we even tried a couple of the wine flights. Hello, so this evening we've had the wine flights and I've gone for the Rockin' Red. Um, and I'm gonna drink them, well, I'm gonna try them in order of what I think will be my least favorite to my most favorite. So the first one I'm having is meant to be light and elegant and it's Outer Limits Chin, chin Salt, Kin Salt, I don't know how to say it. Um, Actually, do you know what? This one smells really nice. Oh, that's delicious. So I've had the fizzy flight of wines and I've got a refreshing, a fruity and a sweet. So I'm going to go for the refreshing one first. And this is Prosecco Le Couture, I think. I can't even get it out of the stand. Right, let's have a taste. That's nice, it's um, flavoursome without being too fizzy. It's nice and cold. And there's quite a deep flavour to that that you don't sometimes get with Prosecco. Before this, didn't think I could tell the difference between red wines. I thought there's some that I like and there's some that I don't like. But now having tasted these, I can see that there is a big difference between the different types. And I think I definitely prefer fruitier. I, I like the initial taste of the spicy one. I assume that's the spicy one. But the aftertaste of the fruitier ones I prefer, for sure. But they're all really nice, actually. I would definitely recommend to everybody. Because this is a very sweet one. It was described as candy floss, which is very odd. It's nice and cold. Mm, there's a nice aroma to it, nice colour, let's try it. That feels a lot fizzier and actually it's very sweet. I can drink it, but if you don't like sweet things, I don't think you'd like that one. And that one was Innocent Bystander, um, very sweet. But I will drink all of these because I do love anything that's got bubbles in it. Cheers. Raffles Bar is a lovely venue that is light and airy, offering great views across the atrium area. This place was always very busy during the daytime. It serves your speciality coffees and teas. These are not included in your fare, but the food such as pastries, sandwiches and cakes are all included, and we enjoyed a Costa coffee with a slice of cake most days after returning to the ship. The Crow's Nest is located right at the top in front of Aurora. All I can say is, wow, this is the place to sip your cocktails and admire the views. The seating is plush and well spaced out. It felt really special when we sat in here. The only downside is it is a very popular venue, especially on formal evenings, when for the majority of the night, all the tables seem to be taken whatever time you popped your head in at. We sat in here for a sail away one early evening and it was really lovely. Again, the bar staff were all very efficient and we never had to wait long for someone to take our order. Several times during the evening, a trio would play drum, piano, brass instruments. They were fabulous and we really enjoyed listening to them. So now onto the drinks packages. Prior to us boarding, p and offered us four different drinks packages that we could pre-book. If you book them before you board, you get them at a slightly reduced price. You will see from these screens how much they cost and what is included. Each person staying in your cabin needs to purchase the same drinks package. 
Now, each guest aged 18 years old and older may bring up to one litre of wine or champagne on board when they embark the ship for the first time only. Wine or champagne over the one litre limit will be stored and returned to you prior to the end of the cruise. Here is the drinks menu so you can see the sort of prices you will pay for individual drinks. All prices are in sterling and there is no service charge on top of these prices. If you are a member of the P&O loyalty scheme, you do get a small discount on these prices depending on your loyalty status. It really does depend on your individual drinking habits as to whether the drinks packages work out cost effective for you. As Olivia and I aren't big drinkers, we decided to pay as you go and we spent approximately £150 each on drinks over our 12 night cruise. We drank the included drinks of tea, coffee and water during the daytime with a speciality coffee and a couple of alcoholic drinks later in the evening most nights. The drinks package would not have been a good option for us but have a look at these prices to determine what would work for you. We hope you have found this review useful and if you've got any questions or comments, please let us know. Until next time, happy sailings and cheers.